All right, so a few months ago, I posted a video on the Apple M1 iMac, eight gigabyte version. And I said that it would be possible to use this computer for producing. Not ideal, but possible. I offered a few different ways to make it a little bit more optimized. And me personally, I'm not using a whole lot in my beats, so I thought it would be okay enough to use it for producing. But I know there's a lot of people out there that put on tons and tons of plugins, effects, samples, and I really just don't know if it's gonna be worth it for those people. How long ago was that video actually? Let me go check real quick. All right, yeah, that video was around three months ago. God, it does not feel like it was that long ago. Also, look at the baby face, no no beard or anything. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, I went back to this video to leave a comment just to hop in here for an update. Do not buy this machine if you're a music producer. Already not off to a great start. It may be able to handle simple tasks for... God, I cannot read this freaking sentence. I'm the one who wrote it. It may be able to handle simple tasks for newbies, but anyone with more experience will find themselves limited when going through the mixing stage. And then the big thing here, I've only had it for a few months and I'm already forced to upgrade. So I'm not gonna sit here and make you guys wait to the end of the video. I don't think this is a good computer for producing. The 16 gigabyte version should be okay. I don't know, I have not tested that one out. And we are only referencing the eight gigabyte version in this video. But yes, I have already purchased my replacement. And I probably look very overexposed because the screen is very bright, but look at this beauty right here, the Mac Studio. Whoa, did not mean to zoom in there. Okay, uh, this is the Mac Studio. I've really got to turn down the brightness for this part. Hang on, that should be fine. Okay, so you've got a couple of different options right here with the M1 Max chip being on the lower end and the M1 Ultra chip being on the higher end. I've already made the mistake in not getting the right specifications. So I did go with the M1 Ultra chip right here, which guys, this is the most expensive anything that I've ever bought before. This is like the price of a car. Okay, don't tell my dad. And I'm sure that the M1 Max version with these specs would be good enough for me right now, but I j I'm trying to future-proof here. I am not getting the fully specced out everything but I'm getting the middle tier, which I think I'm not going to need to upgrade for the next 10 years. Hopefully, that's my that's my, that's my my theory anyway. But I know that we're not here to talk about specs, okay? So let's get back into why I don't think this computer right here, the iMac 8 gigabyte, is good enough for producing. So we are back inside of FL Studio, and we can go into my latest project right here called Street. The last video on this channel was a beat breakdown for Street. And during that video, I was having such a bad headache going through the project. And even right now, it just got done loading. It took around like 30 seconds to actually load. And every single time I'm worried that's going to be crashing. So if you want to go see that video, it'd be in the top right corner over there. So if you look at this project file, there's not a whole lot of stuff going on. I have three different melodies right here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six different drums, including the 808, a vocal sample, and a little perk loop. There's not even any VSTs in here. I'm using all different samples here because it was a subscriber's melody. But anyway, no VSTs in here, all samples and effects plugins. And just by sitting here, look where we are in our CPU. We are from like 60 all the way up to 72, and that's not even including playing. All right, let's, let's just go and see what happens with the playback. I do have Ozone 9 on my master right now. So there will be a bit of a delay, but that's only because Ozone 9 just does that in general. All right, so now that we're gonna hit play, you will now already start to see the CPU start to jump up. Alrighty, and you can already start to hear those pops and clicks. It's, you know, it's, it's so bad, like it's unplayable. Audio delay, uh, just obvious pops and clicks. CPU is just going out of control and there's nothing you can really do about it. Now imagine adding a couple of different Omnispheres on here or some different plugins that might be a little bit more CPU intensive. Because like I said in the last video, I don't have a whole lot of plugins on each individual instrument. Like if you look over here, there's some not even on any of the drums. The main plugins are actually on buses right here on, on insert five and nine. And then of course, Ozo nine is just a heavy, heavy plugin. So already, not good enough to be producing on. And this is not a complex beat. This is not something where I've spent like two months on, it's a full song, or I'm a mixing engineer or a mastering engineer with tons of different audio and plugins on those vocals or, or tens and tens of tracks of plugins, VSTs, samples. This is just a simple beat where I did do a little bit more processing than I normally would because it was a beat breakdown and I had more time to think about what I wanted to do and I wanted to make it sound the best I possibly could. But this is nowhere near how heavy some projects can really be. This is fractions, like a fourth, if not even less, of what some some projects can really be and it's already it already can't handle it's already at 74 without it even playing and then playing at the most heavy part of the track 78 yeah it's just 80 even it just it just can't do it it just can't handle it just for fun here let's add some small little melodies with omnisphere in fact just for right now i'm actually going to be turning off ozone 9 because i legit can't create a melody when it's on and it's already okay we're good i thought it was about to freeze on me again this is weird. Shh. 
sure, dude. Why not? What a great, what a fantastic melody. And now one more instance of Omnisphere. Just one. <laughs> kind of crazy actually okay cool why not man we've got a couple things of atmosphere over here and add some some plugins let's go and do that huh i think it needs some delay i think it needs some free delay too which is a stock plugin so it should not be that that bad on the cpu <laughs> Gotta have some reverb on there, right? Got to. Perfect, perfect. And I want the other one to sound a little bit more vintage. So let's go over to RC20. Turn down the volume a little bit though. Cool, yeah, sounds great. And how are we doing on CPU here? Not bad actually, but now let's go ahead and turn on Ozone 9. I'm in danger. Okay, I think that's all the tests that we really need to do today. I think. The video that I uploaded a few months ago about this computer was all about trying to break it and see how much we could do to really crash it, basically, and make it inoperable by adding on a ton of different plugins and VSTs and everything like that, and I was successful, if I remember correctly. But today, I don't want it to be about trying to crash it. I just, I know my own experience with it. It has not been great. I'm glad I made the switch from Windows to Apple as a creator for music, for videos. Definitely glad switching from Windows to Apple, but... Unfortunately, this is not it. Especially doing what I'm doing, right? I'm making these videos for you guys where I've got one camera, two camera, and then my screen. We're still good? Still good? All right. And these are 1080p clips, guys. I have around, I have basically three different clips running at all times during my chop up phase of my editing. And I just, I just, I can't even run three 1080p clips flawlessly. It can run them and I can finish the video, but it can be choppy at times. It'll just like freeze. And then adding effects, like I am trying so hard to, to inc improve the quality of these videos and the effects that I'm putting on there, it really just can't even handle them. So that's what I mean when I say I need to upgrade my computer. I can't be using this one for very much longer because 1080p footage is not going to be the norm for a lot longer. I'm thinking maybe three, maybe five years until the norm is 4K, which this thing can definitely not run 4K footage. It, it cannot even do one clip. It will freeze and you can't do anything about it. I've tried. So I, that's pretty short video today. I've got one minute left on this recording, so I wanna finish it now. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Just wanna give you guys an update on the computer and my situation. So hopefully you guys learned something and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.